Hello, I'm so glad you found this video. I'll show you how easy it is to make bags for chemo bottles. And if you'll stick with me, I'd like to share a little of my own cancer story. At the end of my first chemo treatment in the hospital, the nurse gave me this bag that a volunteer made. I loved it right away because the lion reminded me of Aslan from the Narnia movie. The treatment I, I'm on requires a half day at the hospital on a drip that sends the chemo through this port that's embedded under my skin and it delivers it straight to my heart. At the end of my hospital treatment, they hook me up to this bottle. It's got chemo in it, about the size of a baby bottle. And there's a hose that goes to my port and it takes another 46 hours to empty. Now the hospital can only give you one of these brown plastic bags with no handles. And its purpose is to protect the chemo from the light. And then I see a nurse two days later to disconnect the bottle. So as you can imagine, juggling while this bottle while sleeping, bathing, dressing, eating, it can be very awkward. And the practical perk of the bag is that I can hang it on my shoulder or my neck so my hands are free. And I'm not worried about it falling off the bed in the middle of the night. The emotional benefit was for me to receive this gift of kindness from someone on a day that was very hard for me. Unfortunately, this was the last one Brampton Oncology Unit had and no one was making them anymore. So I decided I could try making them. I quickly realized I needed a team to help me cut fabric and source materials because I was so sick. But on good days, I could sew a few and bring in about 12 every two weeks. But guess what? They run out every time. I can't keep up and one day I won't be here to make more. So this is where you come in and I decided to make this video so that others might help me make them. They're super easy. If you can sew and cut a straight line, you can make these bags. So this is the sample of a fabric bag that we're gonna make and you can see that it has two contrasting colors. We have one inside and one outside and there is a bag that the opening that the chemo bottle just drops into and then there is a strap that pulls it tight like this. The first thing we do is cut our fabric and you want to cut your fabric five and a half inches wide by 22 inches long. And then the first thing we do when we're sewing is we're gonna sew right sides together. The right side of the fabric is the side that has the pattern on it that you want people to see. So in this case, you can see that the whales here are darker on this side and this is the underside of the fabric. So we always want to start sewing right sides together. All right, and we just line up the edges. I don't use any pins when I sew these bags. I think I might hear a cheer out there. Okay, because we're sewing it right sides together, we are going to have to flip it right sides out. So we're gonna leave a little opening about a third of the way down. And that's gonna be the opening that we can turn the bag inside out through. Now this seam, I use the edge of the foot of the sewing machine as my guide for my fabric. And that gives me about a quarter of an inch seam. And I'm gonna sew my way all the way around and just leave that hole at the end. So I can just lift with the needle still in there. I can just lift and turn the fabric. Lift and turn the fabric. My seams are, sides are still good together and I'm still following the side of the foot for the guide where the fabric goes in. Now 
Now I sewed a little too far. I can just put my, I can just go, oops, I can just go backwards a stitch so that I get still my quarter inch. All right, and so we've got here is where I started sewing. So I wanna stop sewing about here. So I clip off the stray ends of the thread so that they don't end up poking out somewhere else. The next thing we want to do is turn it inside out. But to get a nice sharp corner, I'm going to cut an angle at each corner so this fabric doesn't bunch up inside. So here we're going to cut this off. You just want to make sure you don't cut your thread or you will break your seam. So there we cut that corner off. All right. Now we want to turn it inside out through this hole that we left. So it's pretty easy. fingers in there and there's the that first corner there's the second corner and we just continue to turn it inside out I mean right side out so I kind of stuff all of the fabric inside the hole there and then it's easy for me to come from this end stick my hand in here and pull it out like that. All right, we wanna do these last two corners. So I'm gonna go back through that hole. You can also use a ruler for this or a knitting needle, something. You just don't wanna poke your, your ruler or your knitting needle through the fabric. Okay, so there we have our bag started. And what we're gonna end up doing is, you can see here, we'll fold it in half, and then we'll drop down our flaps. You can see it's starting to come together already. So the next step for us is to go and iron it. So let's go do that. Okay, so now we're going to iron our bag and I like to use cotton, so a steam iron is good. And um, here is our opening where we turn the bag right side out. So you already have a natural hem that's rolled over there and we're going to just iron that shut or flat so we get a nice, a nice sharp edge there. And then because I have kind of a lighter uh, texture fabric and a heavier texture fabric. I like to iron the heavier texture on top. So now we just wanna give ourselves some nice crisp edges. to avoid any more pins you fold it in half like this iron the end and you want your bag to be no shorter than eight inches um, so I use a ruler it doesn't have to be exact I have a little extra at this end but I go to that eight inches at the bottom of my bag and I just fold over the flap there we go. Now I iron that. And then we flip it over the other way. I just line up the edges there. Iron that side. Good. Now we can finish sewing the bag. 
So here we have our ironed bag. No sewing done yet to put together since we last saw each other. Um, and the next step that we're going to work on is sewing this channel. So there's a seam about a half an inch down uh, on each side and you can see the bag is open. So we don't want to sew them together. We have to sew two separate ones. This is an important part. If you sew the sides of your bag first, you will not be able to sew these channels. So make sure that you do your channels next. And to do that, I, uh, so you can see I have no pins. I've just used the ironed edge to hold it there. Um, there is a screw on the plate of my sewing machine. And that is the guide that I use to give me about an eight, uh, a one inch wide seam. Now it doesn't have to go right to the end, but you do want to make sure that you knot it on each side. And to do that, you take a few steps forward, a few steps backward, and then continue. And then we'll go backwards here. That knots that end. And we're good. So the first channel is done. Get that guy free. It's helpful to have a little garbage beside you because these little bits of thread really accumulate fast. <laughs> All right, now we're going to do the flap. So we've done this one. We're going to do the flap on this side. And again, I use the screw on the plate as my guide for the fabric. That one went a little wonky. Don't worry about it. The strap will still fit through. <laughs> so there we've got a channel. I can show you here. We can fit something all the way through. Here it comes out the other end. Okay, so we've got a channel there. The next step is to sew our sides shut. So in order to do that, we're gonna do these two seams right here. So to do that, we're going to make sure our edges are lined up nice and tight. And simultaneously, we're going to be closing that hole that we used to turn the bag right side out. So I use the sewing machine foot again as a guide for my fabric and I want this to be as small of a seam as possible. So inside the sewing machine foot is a hole and the right edge of that hole is what I'm using as my guide for this seam. So it makes about an eighth of an inch. And then you can see here, the sewing is gonna start here and the back of the foot's not getting sewn. It's not a problem. This is not intended to be a watertight bag. It just needs to hold the bottle. So we're good to leave that foot at the edge of the flap and then just sew down from there. So we're gonna knot it. And knot this end. Backwards and forwards. And this process has changed for me over time, the more I make them. If you come up with any great ideas for saving on time or fabric, feel free to let me know because the nice thing about this job is, um, especially on days when chemo is really giving me a hard time, I can just walk away and say, I'm too tired and then come back and start again. So it's, uh, it's a great project. And we will sew this side. So the next step in our process is to insert the strap through the channels that we created in the bag. So I cut, uh, I use like a stretchy fabric kind of like bathing suit material. You can get it uh, as a one inch strip on a roll. Um, and 
that's just really soft for the patient to wear around their neck for two days. And it has a little bit of give, so depending on the size of the person, this as a hard line may not be enough, but this is totally fine, right? So, um, so I use a stretchy fabric and I actually got feedback from the nurses that they really like that material for the strap. So there's two ways we can thread this through the channel. You know, this is floppy. It's going to be hard to push through. If you have a safety pin, you can just attach it to the end of your strap and then you push it through the channel and that's rigid enough. You can push it along, kind of inch it along till it comes out the other side. So there it is. And then you kind of want to make sure that you've got equal amounts on either side. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, I'm gonna show you another tool that's kind of handy too. A friend gave me this threader, kind of bouncy. And we are, what we're gonna do now is on the back channel, we're gonna to wanna to put one strap through one way and the other strap through the other way so that we're able to cinch it shut. So I'll use this threader and you can see how this works. So it just goes through the eye here. And then on the back channel, we push it through from this side. There we go, that's through. And I just pull it tight here, see that's all the way through. And then the channel coming out the strap coming out the front channel now has to go back through the other way. So we put it back through the eye there and just pull it back. So it's kind of a handy tool. Don't have to though. Good old safety pin works every time. And then I tie it at the end, lining up my two straps like this. I wrap it around two fingers and then I just push the end through that hole and then I cinch it up as close to the end as I can and the nice thing about this fabric is it easily unties because when the patient is taking the bag on and off that chemo tube attached to the bottle can get twisted around the strap and especially when you've got chemo brain it can be hard to figure out how to untangle it so if they can untie this free the tube and then tie it back up again is really helpful. And the last thing I like to do, it's a personal touch. I like to write a little encouraging note to whoever's going to receive it because people who are getting this bag is, are on their very first day of chemotherapy. It's a scary day. It, uh, lots of unknowns. You're not feeling good. And to have a kind note from someone um, is a nice personal touch. So I just fold that and I drop it in the bag and the nurses make sure that that goes with it. So just to show you, I do have, this is just a water bottle. This is about the size of the chemo bottle. And you can see there, it just drops nicely inside the bag. They cinch it shut and then the patient can wear it around their neck and their hands are free. And the tube just continues to feed the chemo into their veins. So this, uh, this is how we make a bottle for chemo bags. So you can have fun experimenting with different fabric designs. I find cotton is the easiest to work with, but I've also made them from flannel and polyester. So as someone with a new cancer diagnosis and facing chemotherapy, this kind gift from a stranger brought a little sunshine to my first day of treatment. So what I've learned is that for a gift to be experienced, it must first be received. And I'll enjoy the benefits of my chemo bottle bag that I receive for the duration of my treatment. But I also wanted to tell you about a gift I received that changed my life forever. And it gives me peace at this time when my body's failing. Now you might look at me now and you think I'm doing quite well but that is only because of God's merciful answers to many prayers. At the end of January, 2022, I went to emergency thinking that I was having a gallbladder attack, but instead the surgeon informed my husband and I that I had 
metastasized cancer, innumerable lesions on my liver and my lungs. It was inoperable, it was incurable, and he said that I had weeks left to live. What a shock. With advanced stage four cancer, I literally found myself at death's door. And yet, as, as we called out to Jesus, there was like a supernatural peace that guarded my heart and my mind. Psalm 23 in the Bible brings me a lot of comfort. It says, the Lord is my shepherd and I have all that I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters and he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My enemies like cancer, disappointment, and fear. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely, Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I can enjoy the comfort of this psalm because I know the Good Shepherd personally. His name is Jesus, and a long time ago the Bible showed me that everyone, like sheep, have gone astray and followed their own way. I rejected the God who made me, and I followed my own stubborn, sinful desires, and my sin separated me from my good shepherd. I was his enemy. There was no amount of good that I could do to make up for my past, and God is a just God. We all want justice for the wrongdoing that we see around us, and sin has a penalty, death a painful eternity outside of the presence of God. And just like with my cancer, spiritually, I had to find out the bad news before I could understand that I needed to seek help. God is love. I read that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. And that if I confess my sin, he is faithful and just to forgive my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. He can justly cancel my sin debt because Jesus paid the price in my place through his death on the cross, historically documented 2,000 years ago. And as proof that it was sufficient, God raised him from the dead and he gave me faith to believe and I asked him to forgive my sins and to make me into a new person. And then I became a child of God. And I get to benefit from his peace every day. And I'm confident that when I die physically, I will live eternally in heaven. And until that day happens, he has a good plan and purpose for my life. This gift of faith is available to you too. You can just talk to Jesus. He's always listening. Tell him what's on your heart. Ask him to forgive you, he will. He will be your good shepherd and lead you through life. And if you feel God calling to you now, don't put it off. Respond to him today. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. And if you seek him with all your heart, he promises that you will find him. You can read about him in the Bible and talk to him. If you have more questions or if you have accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness, please contact the owner who posted this video and they will be happy to answer your questions and to help you connect with a local faith community. Thank you for listening to my story. I hope you'll join me in this practical ministry of love for cancer patients. And I also hope that you'll join me in heaven. God bless you.
Thank you, Jesus. I didn't, which is the which is the grace of God. Yeah. <laughs>